Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today I'll read from a beautiful book titled Karsten Fodinger Toward a Radical Sculpture by Anna Rossellini and Roberto Gargiani, published by DCV Books. The tools, materials and manual skills of the building site have made it possible for the German artist Karsten Fodinger to imagine a genre of sculpture that springs uh, from the same passion for the art of construction that permitted Robert Smithson, Gordon Mata Clark, Richard Serra, Michael Heiser, Giuseppe Uncini, Gilberto Zorio and Alighiero Boetti to radically transform the creative processes of contemporary art. But Fodinger's interest in trowels, hammers, straight edges, molds, plaster and concrete originates from his having experienced since early childhood the interminable process of building the family home in Unterachmann in Austria, where his father, Karl Schein, would begin again each summer in keeping with a rural building ritual in which the entire community took part. As an artist, Fodinger deals with the concepts of the strength of materials and the statics of structures, using them to create devices capable of measuring the passage of time, recording the intensity of energy, or countering the precarious nature of any kind of equilibrium. Gravity is the invisible force that brings his chosen materials crashing to the ground. It runs through his splints, his pillars and his wedges in reinforced concrete, steel and wood. And in turn, in order to resist, they combine in powerful lines and figures, announcing in their multiplication and aggregation the urgent need to react to an imminent catastrophe. His sculptures assume features that are generated on each occasion by his understanding of the specific qualities of the places for which they are created. The elements of those sculptures are in search of a steady equilibrium to counter the invisible force that acts to destroy it. The display of naked steel reinforcing bars, barely able to support themselves despite their extensive interweaving, is the point of arrival of his experiments on equilibrium, as if even the most reassuring figures contained the reason for the precarious nature of their balance. His investigation into the statics of structures must be seen in the context of the discovery of the fragility of the very structure that contains every human construction, the Earth. Without the slightest hint of Romanticism, Fodinger's sculptures express uh, with power, discretion and skepticism at one and the same time the approach of an end that is being accelerated by the unchecked exploitation of the resources of the earth, which is one of the materials of the artist's production after plaster, concrete and wood. An awareness of the precariousness of the planet has held a decisive role in shaping the cultural and social positions of Fodinger's generation. In light of this fact, it becomes possible to understand the reasons for the re-emergence of certain themes and figures, and even an interest in certain materials and certain modes of their installation that characterize the experimental art of the 1960s. Smithson and Mata Clark's uh, creative acts, guided by the principles of ecology and entropy, Heiser's ponderous masses made in reaction to the looming threat of atomic war, Zorio and Boetti's building elements, stacked or arranged in alchemical combinations, or Serra's assemblies of materials always imbued with tensions. But more than anything else, Fodinger wants to understand the nature of his art, sculpture, and he does so through radical acts that draw their force from the gestures, tools, work and precision of the builder. Each of his reflections on statics, on equilibrium, on joints between members and on the very nature of materials is aimed at identifying the rudiments of sculpture in order to rediscover the physical labor of removing material with the blows of a hammer, of striking formwork by hand from a concrete cast, of flinging plaster with a trowel, of assembling the members of a trestle with uh, pincers and branches, or of ramming earth. 
the taking away or adding of material, the passage from the liquid to the solid state and the open or closed mold are some of the cornerstones of the artistic genesis of Fodinger's works, which, under the guise of tests in a scientific laboratory and installations on a building site, each designed to reflect the character of allocation chosen after moments spent in intense scrutiny, conceal a Hellenic essence of a universal nature. During his formal education, the range of Fodinger's materials included sheets of paper and plastic, plaster, concrete, tar, wood, sand, water and dry wall sheets. Each of these has physical and mechanical properties that render it elastic, fluid or flexible, and in any case capable of registering tensions, intensity and the passage of time. Fodinger studied devices that could be used to subject each material he selected to a force produced by an agent in such a way as to induce deformations of a particular physical state, without the artist having to intervene once that device had been set in motion. For this reason, his sculptures began to be divided into two essential parts. The device proper, in the form of a table, rack or scaffold made of metal or wood, and the material to be subjected to tests of its elasticity, fluidity and flexibility. It is in these sculptures that we find the premises of his later works, born of a desire to explore the truth of the material on the basis of theoretical principles similar to those articulated by Serra, Smithson and other members of the generation of artists that had influenced him. Stucco, sand, concrete, plasterboard panels, trowels, rollers, hammers, hoppers and sieves. They all serve to indicate the extent to which construction work has allowed Fodinger to bring his art into line with that of a substantial group of his contemporaries who are conducting investigations into the nature of materials, with the expressive results that look similar to scientific experiments on the strength of materials, but based on parameters we are not familiar with, or that make galleries showing their works look like construction sites but without any discernible practical purpose. Oscar Tuazon, Brian O'Connell, Charles Harlan, Christoph Weber, Killiam Ruthemann and Niklaus Wenger are some of the artists creating works according to criteria that hard back uh, to the pioneering experiences of the 1960s and venturing into the territories uh, opened up by doing violence to materials in order to probe their expressive potentialities. Fodinger became one of the leading exponents of research into the development of a new contemporary sculpture founded on the materials, tools and processes of the most rudimentary kind of construction right from the moment of his graduation. At the beginning of 2010, Fodinger's sculptures started to attract international attention thanks in part to his encounter with two gallerists, both of whom active in Berlin. The Swiss uh, Beat Reber and the German Matthias von Stantinglin, who got in touch with him after seeing some of his work on the internet. The two opened a gallery together in Zurich that was uh, located on the premises of a garage that had been renovated by the architect Tamo Prince in Berlin in December 2009. For their first exhibition, Fodinger created a work that would be expressive of the exhibition space. Despite the cold of winter, he wanted the glazed roller shutter of the ex-garage to be left open for the duration of the exhibition. Fodinger occupied the space uh, with uh, two tall blades of reinforced concrete, joined uh, to form a wedge. A pointed bastion erected to defend the gallery against the entry of uh, threatening forces. The sloping cuts at the extremities of the blades reinforce the impression of resistance created by the wedge, with lines similar to those of the struts of unsafe walls. Contemplation of the snow-clad Swiss landscape lay at the root of the invention of a wedge to protect the art space. To construct this piece, something very aggressive, he prepared the framework himself 
assembling wood joists and boards and steel tie bars to create an extremely strong and stable temporary sculpture and thus the opposite of the deformable framework envisaged in the sketches. For the duration of the exhibition, Fodinger's wedge stood in defense of the opening, looking aggressive when viewed from the parking lot, while concealing an unusual space behind its blades, the negative of its pointed shape. The reinforced concrete wedge to question the concept of the temporary installation by the way it was rooted to the ground without any more scaffolding. The heavy and solid concrete and its resistance by virtue of its geometrical form made it clear that the work was created with no thought for the ephemeral, but as a something sturdy and fixed. It could be dismantled, but not sold and moved. The construction machinery brought in for its demolition was only able to drag the wedge, as heavy as a whale, for a few meters out of the gallery and then it had to be turned down on the spot. The mere act of removing a work uh, from the place for which it had been conceived would have signified in any case its destruction, declared Fodinger, quoting Serra. After a variety of construction materials, the temporary equipment used on building sites to erect stable and durable structures also made its appearance in Fodinger's production when he began to install it in the rooms of art galleries. His aim was to use that equipment to construct a space that would possess the same uh, provisional character. It was in this phase of his production that he started to transfer the principles he had tested in sculptures made in the workshop to the scale of construction works, creating an increasingly monumental type of sculpture. Since uh, 2009, Fodinger uses photography as a means of collecting images of reinforcement structures. The structures chosen often have a special character owing to their simple geometry. The recurrent subjects form an artistic series. This is a sculpture for me, he has said about one of his photographs. The book was designed in Switzerland by Omni Group and printed in Germany. Ask for it at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video.